All right. What's up, people? So, I just have to do a follow-up. Just because I have to say um, I'm wrong. Well, kind of wrong, kind of not wrong. Uh, man, I knew it was going to fall. I knew it was going to fall. The thing is, I don't have patience. So, one thing I need to work on is my patience um, in the trading game. Um, so, that's what this lesson will be about is about patience because if you see something that you're taught over and over again and you know you're supposed to look for these certain things and, um and i i looked for it and it was all in the right spots and and i was like so i made that video like oh man Look, I, you know, I told you Ethereum was going to fall, but I just didn't wait long enough. Or, well, that's what today's is about. I just didn't wait long enough. Um, but the other one was about, oh, I was in the wrong spot. So it's kind of a mixture of both, to be honest. Um, the, the first one, yeah, I... I I'm still going to go with... I'm going to go to the charts. Um, I'm still going to go with... Because I, I left it all there. So you guys could tell. Um, I'm still going to go with the uh, first Fibonacci. As far as the smart money one. Because um, I that's what we've always been taught. The last low... Um, before it breaks the higher high, right? That's where you'd put your fib. And if you do that, when it falls into the golden pocket or the 62 to 79, um, more than likely you're going to get a positive trade out of it. And we did. I mean, if, if you look at it, what we can do, I'm going to move this over here. I know where, where, it, where it was. If you look here, if you put the zero line at, if I could find the magnet, there we go. And I just want this now. Okay. So, there we go. I, I'm ADD. I had to have things like lined up perfectly for me. All right. So, if we look at this from, this is a zero, or sorry, this is the zero here, all right, right at the top, and then this is the hundred. Why is this the hundred again? Because it's the last low. Well, it, it does make a swing high, but then the higher high comes right after that, and then the higher higher com you know, comes right after that. So it's either this one, this one, either or um, would have been fine. Uh, I just don't think this one would have been the good one. Actually, that one also could have been good. See, the, there are so many ways that you can read this. Because this one falls right into the 62. And if you're somebody that's trying to be a very, very conservative, uh, and you want to just you know, put your entry point right at the 62 and leave it, that would have been the perfect one to do, to be honest. But if you're like me, and I'm very, very anal about things, and... I probably would have put it here. Why? Because that is the last low that breaks the new high. Well, actually, it already broke the new high, and then it gets to another low. So never mind. I would have put it here. And what I would have done is I would have cascaded my entries. As I would have put X amount here, 
you know, maybe so many lots here, so many lots here at the 70.5, so many lots here at 79, and then so many lots here at 88.6. that way and as you go down you're adding more lots that way when it gets down further into your entry um, you're kind of gaining ground for what you've lost and what you've already entered right so and it would have been perfect because where I, where it would have hit where i would have put the fibonacci would have been just after the 79%. So it wouldn't have hit the 88. And I would already hit two of my entries. And then my third entry, I would have almost nailed, basically. And at that point, what I would have done is I would have looked for the next, I mean, that big drop. I mean, the next thing I would have done was to say, hey, it's probably going to close in. Because um, that created a fair value gap. which I show you here in the orange box, our long fair value gap. I say it's probably going to close up that fair value gap and possibly get to the body of the candle, right? Um, and since this happened on an hour chart, I would have looked in on it on a 15-minute chart to actually get the exit. So... If you look at it on a 15 minute chart to actually get a good exit, probably would have been. I don't know, we probably wouldn't have got a better exit than what I thought we would have. Because you could use the body of this, or you could use the body of this one too. Because even though technically, yeah, I don't know, yeah. If you want to use, especially from, but right before it drops, in this part, right? This little U part. I don't even know if you guys can see. The, the, can, I mean, that's one thing I was wondering. Can you guys see, even see my mouse moving? I can't tell if, you're, if it's recording it or not. Okay, yeah, it is. Um, I'll just use the, the highlighter as well. Why, why not? And this movement, the highlighter's on. Why is it not drawing? Well, it's probably because it's on a color I don't like or something. Um, hold on, let me look really quick. Yeah, it's on some. There we go. Okay. So, in that portion of the movement, right, I need to take it off, <laughs> delete it. You can see right here the last up candle would have been your bearish order block. Hold on, I screwed up the entry. Because if you're working on something on an hour chart, right, and it actually follows through with the plan that you have set, drop down to a chart that's going to be a lower time frame to get your exits. Entries on bigger time frame, exits on usually on lower. Or, yeah, yeah usually it's that. That's the way it always is. Or at least the way I have been mentored. I'm going to pay a lot for my mentorship. <laughs> so, um, so this would also have been a negative order block. And this price is set at 36.29.91. One second. Let me 
sure both of these are set at the right one. Just so it's straight. Okay. So at 36, 29, 91. If, and I did end up getting a good trade out of this. It wasn't as perfect as this because I made a lot of mistakes. But looking back now, I see what mistakes I made. So that's what this is all about. Um, and in doing so, it would have been that one. It would be this one. Date and range. Okay. So now I look at the X amount I would have put in this and got to this exit. So what was that? 1.71% $61 in Ethereum, I think. Is that right? Three, six, one. Three, five, six, eight, three, five, nine, four. No, that's like a hundred and something. I don't know what this thing's talking about. Oh. Okay. And then grab a second one here, here. All right. So sorry about that. Had to take a quick pause. Um, from the seventy point five, which starts around th uh, three thousand five hundred fifty-five, to this order block, which is at thirty-six thirty. Would have been another good chunk. So that's math. That's 80. Am I doing this right? I feel like the other one I said 100 and something, and that's not right. 394 to 3630 is it? Yeah, 3630. That'd be about 36, right? 35, something like that. This one. 355, 354 to 2, 36, 30, 80, 85, something like that. Uh, depending on what, you know, what you're using to trade with um, and how much leverage you're using is depending on how much you're going to make. Because if you just, if you're using MetaTrader 4 and you find, uh, you know, a broker that carries Ethereum, um, you can literally bet 10 cents and make a dollar off each one of these. Um, but then again, you can also lose a dollar each time. So, uh, just because they, their leverage is so high. Um, I try to stay away from MetaTrader 4 when it comes to trading crypto. I try to stay with five time leverage over on, uh, KuCoin, um, and that's good enough for me. Like, if you can't make money off five five times leverage, you probably don't have enough money in your account. Um, <laughs> that's the right answer. All right. So, anyway. Uh, now, we're going to move this down to... All right. So, this is the B to 79. All the way up to 3630. Through 3540 to 3630. So, that's 90 there. That's a good chunk as well. Yeah. Um... To be honest, where where I entered it and I exited, it was I think it was right here. It was right on the sell side liquidity line, I think. On the third time. Cause I remember I was I was out doing stuff around whenever it fell. I was I was mad that I was out, but I was like, wait, I was like, because it kept coming into the fair value gap and then getting rejected by the uh, consequential encroachment, which would be halfway through the block. So it got rejected by that one. The second one, I didn't think it would reject, and I thought I was too late to get in, but it rejected, and this time I was home. So. Uh, I was able to get in on the third one. So I got in around right around here. Yeah, right around uh, 30, uh, 35.50. And I got out right around here. Hold on, let's see here. I want to say... Okay, I think it was this one going up. Yes, it was. It was the first one going up. Because I think I said... Yeah, I, I, said, I said I'd take profit at the body of this guy right here still not a bad trade not a bad trade at all but 
it could have been better. Now, um, that was still going off of the last time, the last video I made. Um, you know, digging deeper into what you can do and how you can do things. And delete this off. And now, remember, I I said that I would this time I, I actually took off the. Uh, the path um but if you don't remember this thing will move i had a path that went up and it went down in a v-shape and it went back up and this was the path well the reason i thought this would be no, I don't want a reminder. To um, the reason I thought this would be the area that it would enter into and then take off, remember, was the fair value gap that it created over here. And then... Sorry. So I got something in my... Uh, it went a little bit deeper. And the reason it went a little bit deeper is not I even had this marked out. And I wasn't even for sure why I had it marked out. And then I remembered, it was, like I said, I, I need to start more. You, you, you got to be organized. I'm really saying I'm not that organized because I have so many notes so all over the place. That if I would have went to, if I would have marked this four hour, right? And I would have traded off the four hour and set it off the one hour. I would have realized it was the four. It was it was the bearish order block, which is starting. It's behind my head. You can't see it. Um, one second. Let me get it moved. It's breaking short term highs again. It's almost the same deal. Remember how this one, whenever it shoots up, I'm always afraid it's going to come back to those those areas that are, you know, kind of open, um, just as it did with this one, right? So. Shoots up, almost double highs, then falls all the way back down into the bullish order block, which would have been right here. Your last red down red candle before going up. It gets it doesn't get to the bottom of it. You know, the one hour fair fair value gap. Um, there's also an order block right above that. There's a four hour order block right here. So, and of course, this four hour order block also reaches down here. So, is not only is it within the constraints of this four hour block, it stops at the beginning of this four hour block. Four hour order block, I should say. So, the last down candle before the up candle closes above it. So, more organized as I should be, and you should too, especially when you're marking all of your order blocks, your breakers, uh, your mitigation um, uh, blocks, um, anything and everything, make sure that you're always doing like, hey, order block for positive uh, bullish order block, and make sure you know that you found it on the four hour chart. If I had looked at that, I probably would have had a way better trade than I did today because I did have my entry set and I got knocked out, but I did eventually get back in and I'm probably breaking even probably right about now because by the time I got in, um, it was probably at the bottom of this four hour, um, or the, at the bottom of this, uh, one hour gap that I was talking about. So because I remember we said it would hit it would hit it really quick and then it would pop back up and that's the way it should go at that time there was a one hour order block over here all that stuff was all lining up perfectly and then I got duped just a little bit making rookie mistakes not taking a look at the four hour and uh, I should take a look at the daily really quick actually it's the daily that I thought Whenever I first looked at this and I first got in, I thought I was in because it popped down 
and it hit this on the daily and it stopped right there and i swear it was going the other way for quite some time and i was like i i mean it it it, it popped and it went just as it almost it should coming off the daily when whenever you see something come in it hit something and you see it hit an order block and it immediately bounces off that's almost like a dead giveaway it's going back up um uh, but it faked me out it did did it faked me out it, it smart money trader um I should I should have thought even a little bit harder and thought you know what it's gonna get down to the body just bouncing off the wick isn't enough because that's what I did I, I I measured off the wick and if I go back to the one hour I can probably it might even show up well actually let me go back to the day and mark it um, actually no it's right here this order block this is the daily order block boom as you can see yeah right here. Uh, I am going to move this again so it's not in my way every time I touch it. Um, as you can see, as you can see it, boom, right there, hits the order block, bounces up, and then starts a new one, goes up, comes down, boom, bounces up again. And I was like, okay, two bounces off the order block, I'm good. And then the third one comes, and boom, right through, and that's the one that took me out. And as soon as it took me out, I had to sit there and think about it for a second. Do I jump back in? Do I wait a little bit? What do I do? And I did. I just jumped right back in. Bought it. And then I set my... Uh, I realized <laughs> where this was. And I set my um, uh, stop loss right here at 34. 3358 or 3360 and the reason for that was because um i think it was mainly it was because it was both the bodies of these two candles i didn't think it would get below the bodies of these two candles i just had an instinct that's all uh, especially since i realized that this was the four hour um uh, basically the, the four hour uh, order block and that would have again in the daily probably got just into just into the body of the daily well, let's see where the daily body starts okay right there okay so if you're going to go off the daily order block as your trade right um, bullish order blocks always good trades but always check out your time frames right because uh, as you can see with me we have went from hour to 15 minute from the earlier ones up here to the longer drop you know to going to the daily basically um and realizing that even in the daily, um, the four hour would have been, not even the four hour, realizing that you had a daily order block, taking a look inside of that daily order block and finding the best spot available would have been your last four hour order block. So uh, that's basically what we realized with this. Um, uh, this lesson, um, this lesson on how on on entries, um, because technically your order block is going to go from wick to wick. However, most of the time it doesn't get past the body, and that's because that's where almost all the volume is. So with smart money. Um, generally almost all the time uh, you will see that it, it will hit the body and take off after that um, this one kind of did that it got in the body and then it got up a little bit but then it fell back down um, and hit the last four hour 
So again, I am in. And now what am I looking for as an exit? That is the next best question. Um, what we gotta do is take our fib, because I'm a fib trader through and through. I'm gonna, sorry, I, I keep, you know, I'm just gonna take myself over here, because I'm pretty sure I'm blocking you guys every time I do this. There we go. So, um, looks like this probably would have been the last high right here. Hold on. Yeah. It's like this would have been the last high here. And then falls. So this would have been the lowest low. And then this one is the one that breaks the high on the daily. So yes, it looks like we do have a good, good starting point. If we had broke it down even further, um, you know, to be honest, again, I would have just put him at sixty-four percent or sorry, sixty-two percent. I would have put another entry at seventy point five, and another one at seventy-nine, and it. Would have just got a inside of the 70.5 and then took off after that. And I would probably be, well, I'm right now I'm breaking, probably just now breaking even. Um, from the last trade that I lost. Um, but uh, this one, um, if you know, if we were going to do it this way, uh, or if we would have looked at it a lot closer and got it right on to that four hour mark. Right. The only thing, the only bad thing about this is, especially with Ethereum or it, it, any, anything like this with these order blocks is that you do, or you, you want to try to get your, um, your stop loss just below the 100 um just because it you know who knows uh where it can go i mean so, sometimes these things will go just a little bit past the 100 maybe you know ten dollars and it'll turn around and then take off and then you got your trade but you never know sometimes you could it could just barely touch the 64 and then you got your trade so that that's why this golden pocket is so sensitive and and why you have to play it so tricky um but if we had played it you know what what was this level let's do the coordinates here 33 77 65 and so if we would have put 33 77 65 and then below the 100 the higher level is 32.69. Okay. Uh, and then $10 below that, of course. So 59. See that? Entry price to the stop level. That's a long way. So, what do you want to aim for? At least, I say I have it way up here. You want to aim for, I mean, full aim for the nearest high. All right. Now, along the way, of course, you should be having take profits. Meaning, you know, course how much you have entered with at this point it could be your full entry um and even as it's going up you should be noticing things um we need to even drop down to the 15 minute if we want to 
as we drop down to the 15 minute, we can see that it is already, well, it hasn't came above uh, this little swing high yet, but it did break this little high. Um, so what does it mean? So I, I'm trying to think of small pullbacks that it would that would have happened um, to where you can make another entry. Um, you know, make multiple. In, I mean, say as it keeps going, make multiple entries. If it looks like it should have an entry, don't just make an entry just because. Oh, it's going higher. We should have an entry. Take a look around. You know, see if there's any. Um, you know, breakers that, that could halt it or, um, like, you know, this guy here or these guys right here, I would be looking at those and going, uh, I don't know. So I would be taking a profit as soon as it got above that first swing high for sure. May have not have been that much, but I would have taken some profit. Um, and then realizing that it's probably not going to go f down even further, I'd probably be moving my stop loss already. Just because, one, it broke a high. Two, again, that would have been the perfect entry point. Would have been that four-hour order block within the daily b b bullish order block. I mean, that was the perfect entry point, obviously. Um, unless we see tomorrow that overnight it goes down, and then it wasn't the the best entry point. But I think it was because so far everything has been balanced on Ethereum. But I I, I just had a feeling that you know we were going high. We you know we weren't balanced, and that's why I thought it was going to fall. So we have fallen. Now we know where we're at. Waiting for the high. Now, again, uh, have objectives along the way, right? So, first one would have been this guy, right? And that's where it got to, it looks like, before it started falling. Now, personally, I think it's going to get higher. Because it looks like it's fighting to get higher. Um, and, th and this was also around the time what it was creating a new weekly candle. Look at this. So that exactly at 7 o'clock is when this hit. That's exactly when it, in my time zone it creates a new weekly candle. And if we want to look at that really, really quick. Go to one week. Now, as you can see, I mean, geez, there's almost like no, like it didn't do anything last week. I mean, like it did, but that big fall was what really, really hurt us, you know? I guess I just set some kind of alert. Oops. Um... But now, as you can see, it, it you know even today, since seven o'clock, and it is now nine twenty. It's been two hours, and we've already got a pretty big weekly candle going, or better than what we had last week. But we still got a long way to go. So, and look how high it got last week. So that I mean, it broke this high, so it broke that liquidity. I don't even know what some of these are, <laughs> what some of these notes notes are. But as you can see, it, it's it's making it's balancing, and definitely that's what last week was. It was all balance. Made a high, came down. Now it's time to continue going on. I think this week will be a pretty bullish week. 
and also you got to think about a weekly profile you know um, just think about how the candles are made you know is it early in the week that it takes off and i mean last week it was uh, well i don't know last week i think it was a couple couple days maybe and then like midweek it took off and then you know toward the end of the week it started slowing down but it's still going um so you got to think about how a, how how a weekly candle is made and you can break that down by the day to see how the weekly candle was made and we see that mainly was a big drop it's just fine you know it 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 is what it is And so, all right, anyways, objectives, that's where I was going with this. Sorry, I get, I start getting on, going on tangents and I, I forget where I'm at. All right, objectives. Um, daily, uh, it, like I said, it, it did hit within the daily order block. Um, it nailed the four-hour order block. Which was right here. Um, oh yeah, never mind. I moved my head. But if you can't see it here, I'll point it out for you. This candle right here. I'm going to highlight it. That red candle right there. Was the, the daily order block that. You can see once it finally, the second, it had to be the second candle here that came up above it, closed above it, and now after that, nothing closed above, closed below it. As soon as price came down into it, boom, rejected, boom, rejected, boom, rejected. And then this one here finally came back down, boom, rejected. This would have been oh so nice to actually get in on that one. Because I think this one uh, almost got or went just a little bit past about halfway through yep right around the 50 percent mark that's what you want to look for if you see it hit right around the 50 percent mark of a bearish shorter block expect something like that <laughs> like like this huge candle um that that was Generally, what you'll see, you'll see a, that kind of reaction uh, when you get to halfway through the order block. And now, four hours, we're just up and down, up and down, consolidation. Um, if we're looking to the left, this is what we have to compete with, right? We're trying to see if it's going to get above that high or not. And it didn't. I thought it was. I, I honestly thought it was. Um, I thought it would. Again, I, I, I made that first video about it dropping earlier, I think on Thursday or something. It's now Sunday. Um, so I thought it would drop. It did. Um, I think this is on Friday here, right? Yep. So this is on Friday when it finally gets higher. Um, Saturday it was just kind of what? And then now we're on Sunday. So, objectives. Now that we're on the four hour, again, I want to look at this guy. This, because this could be a breaker. Because um, we have, we really don't have, let me see. We have higher, high, low, high. Uh, maybe more of a mitigation point. Still, I, I, could, I could still people, you know, I think it's going to get higher than that. And then I would look at this guy, you know, each one of these, take a look at and see the reaction that happens off of it. Um, 
but primarily all this noise this there's so much noise in here um I would just try to pick a couple main objectives and just aim for those. Um, first one I would be going for would be this one. The, the most recent up candle before all of those last down candles in, in, in the four hour. Right. Um, that body is at and I would go for the body um, cause I think it, I think it would force itself through the wick what is that 3530 somewhere around 3530 it would be my first object well my first objective I would have already taken I already said but it would have been a very small percent um, maybe like 10% of, of my lots or whatever uh, but 3530 I would definitely check out that. That would be more like 20, 20 to 30% of the lots. Make another objective. See if you can find some equal highs. That's what I would do. I see two equal highs right here on this resistance liquidity line. Um, if we get down to, I mean, just keep it breaking down even by the hour maybe. Yeah, see by the hour you have one, two, three, almost four kind of stops at this red resistance liquidity line. Maybe that's your next objective, um, which is at thirty six oh five. Um, and then you're you know, and take the rest, and then aim it for your last objective here, um, or even get down to the five minute if you can if you if you really want to get into it get down to the five minute find out where the last up candle is in the five minute uh, it looks like it's right here boom And then watch and see the reaction whenever it gets close to that to see if it's going to reject it really, really quickly or push through it. I think by this time it is going to break that high. Because we were just below the previous high. That's what that dotted line is. It was the previous high and this one was just below it by a couple dollars. So third, it's usually third time's a charm. You'll have a lot of people thinking that this is and getting smart money. A lot of people use this as resistance, right? So you'll have a lot of people that'll try to sell at this point. And smart money will usually take it the opposite way and push it up. That's what Bitcoin did today. I don't know if you noticed, Bitcoin was below a certain point. Um, and then all of a sudden it jumped through its hoops and went a lot, lot higher. It was right around uh, in here. I for, where, forgot exactly where it was. I'm on the weekly chart with this one because I was doing the same thing. But if I went to the hourly, I could probably find you and show you. Yeah, right here. So Bitcoin... Hit this high, hit this high. And whenever it got close to this one, it was just madness. It just boom, went straight up and broke right through it. Um, I ended up catching it. Uh, I, I was in a positive trade, um, I think, from the day, or the day before. Um, but I ended up catching it because I waited until it got through it. Um, and I think I exited right at the top of there's a one hour fa fair value gap. I thought I was going to hit that one, the top of that one, fa one hour fa fair value gap and then bounce back. So that's where my exit was, was that one hour fair, va fair value gap, which was 56,000, I think 242, 250, hold on, let me check 256, 
I think I put 255 just to be safe. I like to round to even at like round to numbers like that. Um, just because I'm kind of OCD. But it spiked up and it got to a high of 56,000. What was that? Uh, five, one. 53,545. I would have never guessed that. Um, there's no Fibonacci that would have guessed that. Because uh, I even tried the Fibonacci's. Um, none of them made sense. If I went from here to here. It doesn't even get to the 27, I don't think. Yeah. So... Fibonacci wouldn't help me unless I would have tried maybe a shorter one. Um, yeah, see, that wouldn't even help me at all. So, um, so I just tried for the four-hour gap <clears throat> with the one-hour uh, gap and got there. And uh, now I'm not sure what it's going to do. Um, I, I, I'm sure it's going to go higher. I, sh I probably should have got back into this. But uh, I'm taking one trade at a time. And I'm focusing on Ethereum. And uh, we're going to see where this one goes. All right. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you soon.